Good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about English and professional communication. That is our course for the first semester, and the course code is HU one five one. The course runs in two credits, in which there is one lecture component and another is the tutorial component. In the lecture component, we try and cover up LSRW skills. That is listening, reading, speaking, and writing skills. Now, through this course, we intend to make you good professionals who are good at communication skills. As the name of the course indicates, it is English and professional communication. We intend that the students should be good at professional communication, and for this, they need to develop their communication skills. So, for the in the first lecture we are going to talk about communication what is communication the meaning of communication its importance the need for effective communication and the different types of communication this is what we are going to discuss in today's lecture the very first thing that we come to know is what is communication communication is the exchange of facts ideas opinions or feelings in short you can say it is a expression or it is an exchange of thoughts ideas and opinions between two or more than two person now you can see on the board that the communication is of two types intrapersonal communication and interpersonal communication when we talk of intrapersonal communication it means the communication that is going on inside intra within your own self whatever the communication is going on that is said to be intrapersonal communication for example often when you are coming to the university you will be talking to yourself about which dress should i wear should i wear the pink one or should i wear the blue one should i carry my textbooks along with me to the university or should i carry my notebooks now all these things there are any number of things that you keep on communicating when you are talking to your own self now this type of communication is said to be intrapersonal communication the second part is interpersonal communication the communication that takes place between two or more than two persons is interpersonal communication it may be a communication with your friend it may be a communication within your peer group it may be a communication with your teacher or it may be a simple group discussion all this kind of communication in which there is an involvement of a second person is known as interpersonal communication the very first thing that we should know and understand is why is communication important what is the need to communicate children we all are social beings we all live in a society and when we are living in a society it is important for us to communicate it is important for us to convey our ideas to the other person and to receive others as well at the same time it is a continuous process communication is a continuous process it's a give and take you speak something the other person responds to what you speak and there is the com communication continues the flow continues unless you have something to say or express the process of communication doesn't take place moving on to the need of communication there's a very good saying he who communicates is he who leads now it depends upon the leader it depends upon the professional and their ability to communicate how well is a professional or a teacher or a leader able to communicate will be the one who will decide his future so communication is one that plays as a deciding factor for your future you may be well versed with certain things but until or unless you are able to put across your ideas to the other person in a proper way you will not be called an effective communicator so it is essential to know that communication plays a vital role in your life 
that governs the process of communication. And definitely, people will give their best only when the communication is clear. Supposing you are having a simple talk with your friend and you are not able to tell him or her whatever is going on at the back of your mind or whatever you want to share to that person. In that case, your communication would result in a failure. So the very first thing that we should keep in mind is we must have the ability to communicate and the ability to communicate will come over a period of time. It is not a day's business that you become and emerge as effective communicators. It will develop over a period of time and people are there, you will find many people talking and talking and talking but they are not talking sense. So it is important to know that along with the ability to communicate, you must talk something that is having sense. Now there is a very nice quote by Robert Frost. Robert Frost is an American poet and he has very rightly said, just have a look at this, half the world is filled with people who have something to say and cannot say it. And the other half of people who have nothing to say and keep on saying it. Meaning is quite clear. Yet I will go through it once again. Half the world is filled with people who have something to say and cannot say it. And the other half of people who have nothing to say and keep on saying it. See children, the interpretation is very very clear that even resourceful people, they fail to communicate because of their ability to present their ideas. They do not possess the ability to present their ideas and that is why their communication results in a failure. On the contrary, the people who know nothing, they keep on saying, 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 they feel that when they are expressing themselves and when they are keeping on, when they are continuing with the communication, they are proving to be very good communicators, effective communicators, but they forget that in the process when there is no content in the communication, they reveal their ignorance and prove themselves to be bad communicators. In both the cases, communication reveals. At one hand, there are people who know, who have knowledge, who have some some substance within them and yet they are not able to express it because of lack of communication skills. On the other hand, there are people who know nothing but they keep on speaking and speaking just to show that they have or they have the ability to communicate and they are able to prove themselves as good leaders or they try and show that we know so much but only in the real sense they are lacking in content. So we need to understand that whenever you are speaking something it must have a content. It should be something that is well studied, that is clear. It should not be senseless. So your communication should have a sum and substance. Only then you will be considered as an effective communicator. There is a very good question once my students asked me that ma'am, what is the need for effective communication? Very true. We are communicating. All of us are communicating. The world today has shrunk into a global village wherein you can get in touch with anybody and everybody on a phone call. You are mobile. You can contact people on the internet, through Facebook, through Twitter and through several other apps. But yet, do you think communication is possible? Do you think you are communicating properly? Or let us take it the other way, is it always effective? Whatever you are talking, whatever you are speaking, is it effective? Is it in the real sense contributing to the communication process? Are you emerging as good communicators, as effective?
communication skills or not just be a communicator you should be an effective communicator a communicator who is able to make an impression on the audience and able to communicate his or her ideas to the other party in a proper manner only that person is said to be an effective communicator and for that you need to know certain principles you need to know the pros and cons of it you need to understand how important it is to be an effective communicator just consider this this is a very nice quote by mark twain and here he says the difference between the almost right word and the right word is really a large matter it is the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning now you can understand that both the things are different lightning is different and lightning bug is different now this is an insect lightning bug is an insect which emits light and lightning or if we know what is lightning so if the difference is huge but often we take that okay it's okay if i speak the almost right word it is not uh, even if it is not exact or appropriate at least i am able to speak of course you are able to speak of course you are able to communicate but you are not able to uh, communicate properly for example when you see a girl and she is looking good you say she is looking pretty she is looking beautiful or she is beautiful but at the same time when you are looking at a boy you should not say that he is looking beautiful there is a different word for man he must say he is looking smart or he is looking handsome though the words are synonymous but there is a difference between the right word and the almost right word so try and take the right word in your conversation this will help you be a better communicator and effective communicator and for this you need to practice a lot you need to know that what is the appropriate word for the situation that i am referring to whenever you are talking to your friends colleagues we often take it very lightly and we use the words that are synonymous or they are almost right but we forget that if we want to emerge as effective communicators if we want to emerge as good communicators we must know that there is a difference between the almost right word and the right word and the difference is huge as has been very rightly said by mark twain why is effective communication important see when you are not able to communicate effectively it will cause frustration it will cause your strain on personal relationships your function of the relationships will not be proper and you can see that it is only the lack of effective communication that results in war between countries the other person or the other party is trying to explain the thing but the other party is being defensive not able to understand not able to communicate not able to understand the things in the proper manner and that results in wars between the countries so this is the importance of effective communication you are going for the interviews you are appearing for various um, interviews you are giving various proposals make be business proposals or proposals in your personal life but if you are not able to present it properly if you are not effective you will not be given or you will not be entertained in the proper manner so for that matter you need to understand that effective communication is something wherein you present yourself in a manner that is appreciable by others in a manner wherein you are able to put across your views your feelings your 
as an effective communicator and people will love to listen to you then. Often we have a problem, often we complain that people are not ready to listen to me. Whatever I say, I am not understood in the proper manner. Or they are not, they are not ready to understand whatever I am trying to express. So if such kind of thing is happening with you, you need to take a call. You need to understand, you need to look within. Again, therein we will use that intrapersonal communication, looking within. You need to introspect and see that whether there is a problem in me. Am I able to communicate effectively or not? Am I in a hurry to finish up my conversation? Am I using the right words with the right context? Or am I using the proper words to explain my point of view? You need to go through a lot of things. You need to introspect yourself completely and then take a call and understand that are you being an effective communicator? If you are being an effective communicator, you need to put yourself in a way that people understand. But if you are not doing that, you need to again think that what are the areas, what are those grey areas in which I am not able to present myself properly and work on that. Certainly, if you put in your efforts, if you work on those areas, you would be able to overcome that and you would be able to communicate properly. Now, there is a very interesting thing that I got and I just thought I should share it with you. What happens if we are unable to communicate effectively? And there is a very nice example that I got. There is a couple who goes to the judge and they are seeking a divorce. So on a final hearing day, the judge thinks that I must interview the boy, the lady and the man. So to start with, he interviews the lady and the judge says, a judge was interviewing a woman regarding her pending divorce and asked, what are the grounds for your divorce? She replied, about four acres and a nice little home in the middle of the property with a stream running by. No, I mean, what are your relations like? I have an aunt and uncle living here in town and so do my husband's parents. The judge, after listening to all these things, feels that he should ask something else. He is not able to make himself clear and so he puts a different question to her and says, Ma'am, does your husband ever beat you up? Yes, she responded. About twice a week, he gets up earlier than I do. Finally, in frustration, the judge asked, Lady, why do you want a divorce? Oh, I don't want a divorce. She replied, I have never wanted a divorce. My husband does. He said he can't communicate with me. Now you can understand from this example that the case is very clear. The wife is not able to understand whatever the judge is trying to communicate with her. She is not, she has no clues about what she is speaking about. She takes the word in a different context. And let us now see what went wrong, wrong in this communication. See, in the first question, when he asked, what are the grounds for your divorce, he refers to the basis for action. That is, on what basis are you asking for a divorce? And he knows, wants to know about that. But on the contrary, the lady takes it as land. Accordingly, that I have got so much of acres, so much acres of land and a stream running by. Whereas the question that is being asked to her is about the relationship or what is the ground for their divorce? What makes her think or what makes her take the call for a divorce? Why does she want a separation from her husband? That is what he is looking for. Then the second question when he asks about the relationship. Here the relationships, the, what are your relations like? He asks. So 
That means the physical heating, heating or physical assault. So we just want to specify that is there anything that she is not able to tell? And that is why he asks her that is there any kind of physical hit by the boy, by the man? Whereas she takes it as beating means winning in a competition. And she makes a remark that yes, he beats her by getting up twice in a week early. Then she wakes up. So you can see that the communication errors are huge. Here, because she is not able to understand what the other person is asking, she is not able to reply in the correct sense. And that becomes a reason for divorce. That becomes a reason for separation. Similarly, in our lives, if we are not able to express ourselves clearly, if we are not able to communicate effectively our point to the other person, we may also land in such drastic results. Maybe you may uh, losing a job, maybe losing a personal relation, it may be losing a good friend. So, it is very important for us to understand that every, every sphere of life, be it personal, be it professional, we need to communicate and in order to be successful, we need to communicate effectively. If we are communicating effectively, you will find a balance in your personal as well as your professional life. There are certain principles that I would, I would like to tell you about communication. Children, communication is unavoidable. The first principle as you all can see is communication is something that is unavoidable. Even when you are not speaking something, you are communicating. You may be wondering if I have not said anything. How is it I communicate? But and just, I will just quote a study when it is said that 55% is body language, 38% considers of intonation, the rise and fall in the pitch and only 7% words. So you can understand that the body language plays a major role in our communication. Even if you are not speaking anything, your body is conveying. You are conveying through your body movements, through your eyeball movements, through your gestures and through your pitch. So you need to understand that communication is something that is unavoidable. Even without saying a word, you are communicating, you are communicating through your body movements, through your eyeball movements, through your gestures. It also brings to our notice that we need to correct our body language. We need to sit straight whenever we are sitting in the class. Whenever we are talking, we should make use of hand movements to a limit. We should give very good and positive expressions in the sense that when you are, when a teacher is teaching, you should focus on the teacher, you should focus on what is, whatever is being taught and when you are sitting straight, looking at the board, your posture is correct, your body language is correct and you give an impression that you are really alert, you are really interested into the lecture. On the contrary, if you are sitting silently with your hands folded and with your eyes down, you give the impression that you are defensive. You are not ready to take the lecture. You are not ready to take the ideas. So please do take care of your body language at every point of time. It is just a matter of 30 seconds in an interview, children. A person takes just 30 seconds to analyze whether you are in the interview or out the interview. The way you walk, the way you introduce yourself makes the deal. So take care that you are properly dressed, you are speaking with confidence, 
you are using. And you forget that you are hurting somebody by your words. And when you realize, it's often very late. So take a call and try and understand that communication is irreversible. So before speaking something rude, before speaking something anything harsh to anybody, try and ask yourself that if I say these words to somebody, will I be able to take back? Howsoever you may say I take my words back, but words are like arrows, they have gone. They will not come back. So be very wise in communicating. Even if you have some ill feelings towards somebody, it is not always necessary that you communicate it to the other person. Please take care of the language that you use. Take care of the decor. And maintain the decorum. Maybe you will face certain people in your life whom you like and whom you dislike. And you will have to communicate to both the parties, the, the ones whom you like and to the ones whom you don't like. But if you are clear in what kind of words I have to use so that my point is clear, whatever I want to say is clear, at the same time I won't hurt others, you will be an effective communicator. And last but not the least, Communication is not a panacea. By panacea we mean it is not a one shot remedy. A remedy for all the errors that could cure everything. At times you may wonder that I had a very good communication with the other person. I was very good. He or she was responding very well. Yet the purpose was not solved. So the, apart from communication, there are several other factors that work and makes it a failure or a success. So the best thing what we can do at our level is give our best. Automatically, we may not get those best efforts that we are expecting, but somewhere down the line we will get effort, we will get results of our efforts if we are clear and if we are good communicators. At the same time, we should not expect that every time we will get very good results out of communication. It may or may not be possible. We will also talk about various factors that affect the communication process where we will talk about the barriers to the process of communication in the next lecture where we will talk what are the barriers, what is that that hinders or obstructs the communication to be a good and fruitful communication. In that case, in that lecture, we are going to deal about this aspect in a more detailed manner. The components of effective communication. Now, as we have been talking about effective communication, let us just discuss about the components of what goes into the making of effective communication. You can see over here, conciseness and clarity. You should be concise. Concise means to the point. Neither should you be too long, nor should you be too short in communication. Whenever you are communicating your thoughts, your ideas to the other person, you should be concise to the point and clear. Clarity plays a very important role in the process of communication. Whatever you are communicating should be clear. Clear at your end as well as clear at the other end. Because even if you are clear at your end and the other person is not able to understand it clearly, please reassure, ask questions, put it across in a manner that he or she is able to understand your point of view. Only then your communication is clear. This is a very good example, simple example I have taken and I will just speak that. Don't say that homo sapien yearn for dihydrogen oxide. When you say that this word, when you say the first sentence that homo sapien yearn for dihydrogen oxide, the person will be all confused. He will not know what is that meaning because everybody cannot understand this language. And whereas in simple terms if you say the meaning of the sentence is that man wanted 
person. The third thing that we say is generous and interest. Be generally interested in your work. It is not that that you are working or you are speaking just for the sake of speaking. If you are genuinely interested about what you are going to speak, about what you are going to communicate, no matter what it is, you will make a mark. The reply that he gets is very interesting. 
astronomy, economics and oceanography are enough to keep an honor student busy. Do not forget that the pursuit of knowledge is a noble task and you can never study enough. Love that. So you can understand from this that the father makes it quite obvious to his letter that he is not going to send any money to the son. So herein we come to understand that what is the meaning of effective communication. If we are not communicating effectively, neither the son was an effective communicator nor the father was an effective communicator. If the son had been able to communicate effectively to his father that he wanted some money and he should have mentioned that these are the reasons father which are for which I want money. I am sure the father would not have written in this fashion or in this manner. So you need to be very effective in your communication and you need to keep in mind all the factors that we have studied. You need to be concise, you need to be brief, you need to be persuasive, you need to be genuinely interested in whatever you are trying to communicate in order to be a good communicator. Look at another example which shows that if you are not communicating properly, how it results in a bad impression or how it will create problems. There is a young boy and he has studied, he is trying to make an impression on this, on the girl and he has studied somewhere, from somewhere and wants to show his knowledge to the girl. And here is what he says. Hey, do you know that your father's genes can give you diabetes? Now, this girl, who already has a very negative opinion about this boy, feels that she is talking about genes. He's, whereas the boy refers to genes, that is the chromosomes that are there in everybody and they are from, they pass on from generation to generation. And what he is The girl, because of the kind of impression she has about him and because the kind of information that he is giving to her, she feels that he is talking about jeans, the outfit. And she says, stupid, I don't wear my father's jeans. So you can see that how due to ineffective communication, we are not able to present ourselves in a proper manner. With this, we end today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will be talking about the types of communication in 